nobody gets it and nobody gets you and the doctors don't get you, your family doesn't get you, your friends don't get you, you're all alone. But then I'd be like, there are so many people who have struggled with this and who have recovered. Because I didn't think it was possible. For months, I didn't think it was possible. If I hadn't been told about, oh, you need to sleep, you need to, you need to take this medication, you need to do this, X, Y, Z, I think I would have recovered a lot faster because I was just trapped in this whole, this, the struggle was just exacerbated by everything the doctors were telling me, everything my family was telling me, my, you know, even my family, I adore my family, you know, but, and they all, all wanted what was best for me. They just didn't understand. And so if I could have connected myself with someone who understood earlier on in the struggle, who had told me, hey, you're not a freak of nature, you will sleep again. And it's so possible to recover fully and to never struggle again. If I had had somebody to tell me that, like, it would have been night and day. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another really special Talk Insomnia episode. We have Abby with us. Welcome. Hi. Glad <laughs> to be here. And, uh, you know, for, for those of you who wonder, like, how did this uh, this episode ha happen? Well, actually, you volunteered. You, you wrote a message saying, like, hey, I'd like to be a guest, and I'm also grateful for that. I don't know that much about your story, so I'm, I'm curious as well. A uh, lot to learn from. But with that said, yes, go ahead. Tell us how do you start having trouble sleeping. Yeah, so my story began last year in 2023 around april of last year and my struggle lasted for about five ish months and so it's it's been a while since it ended and then i, I did some thinking and i'm like you know what i'm gonna reach out to this channel that really helped me throughout that whole process and i always knew i wanted to reach out to you guys i just it needed to be at the right time when i could sort of process everything that had happened and sort of be able to like synthesize it in a way that makes sense, you know, because I've had a lot of time to reflect on it. So yeah, it started, it was in my senior year of college and I graduated last year in May. And there was a really big buildup before the trouble sleeping started. And I think if someone was watching some of the things that were going on in my life, they would have sort of predicted <laughs> that that would have happened, but I had no clue it was coming. So when it hit, I was like, taken aback by it. But I was under the gun. I was under a lot of stress because it was my senior year. And in our last semester, we had this thesis project. Um, and I did a combined major. So I was doing environmental studies and art. And so it was an art thesis, based thesis. So we had that semester basically to make a body of work and then display it in our campus's gallery. And so it was a really unique opportunity. It was exciting. But I just the whole time struggled with my thesis. I was unhappy with it. I was criticizing it. <laughs> I was working night and day just constantly on this project. I didn't even take a spring break. My school gave us two weeks of spring break. I worked through that whole time. I was basically just like a workaholic the whole time. So I didn't give myself a break. I didn't give myself time to rest. And so, you know, things sort of started going downhill from there because I just wasn't taking the time for myself and I was very obsessive over this this thesis project. So, you know, things are going along and I start to notice that I'm getting really fatigued easily. At that point, I'm still sleeping, not probably not the best sleep of my life, but I don't think anything of it. I'm like, oh, I'm just a little tired. I'm worn down. I, you know, after thesis is over, I kept in my head, I was like, after thesis is over, I'll be fine. You know, I'll just, you know, bounce back from this and life will go on, right? That was not the case. So we had this really intense, so it all came to a pinnacle this week. Um, we had a week of installation in the gallery. And I was probably the most stressed version of myself, I think I've ever been. I've never been this stressed in my life. And so in the middle of that week, I just, I remember this specific moment. I, I pulled an all-nighter because I was like, I need to get this done now, basically. I was putting this pressure on myself. And I remember <laughs> leaving the studio after that all-nighter feeling like delirious. And I remember driving, I shouldn't have been driving at that point, but I drove to McDonald's <laughs> and I got this like, this you know, really bad food. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to bed now. And I ended up sleeping four hours. And I was like, that was crazy. I'm never doing that again. 
And then it, and then things started to get worse because I was still so stressed that week. And so it's how I remember it starting is I would start waking up at like 5 a.m. Like every day. And I just couldn't go back to bed. And I'm like, this is so weird. Like, I'm just, I must be so stressed. Like after thesis is done, I'll be fine. So the week ends that, you know, torturous week of just grinding under the gun, had to get the deadline done. I got the show up. It all went well. It, we had the opening day. And I remember being just so out of it on the opening day and overstimulated because there were so many people there. And I was like, oh my God, like, here's all this work I just did this whole semester. And now it's done. This thing that's consumed my life is done. And I'm supposed to be happy about it. But I felt strangely not happy about it. Like, I wasn't fully satisfied because I felt like I rushed some things. And, you know, upon reflecting on that whole process, I think, you know, I did the best I could with the time I had, with the materials I had. I had a really low budget, too. So, you know, upon reflection, like, I was doing great for the state that I was in <laughs> the whole time. And I got it done. You know, I got it done on time. Everyone was so proud of me. My family came and visited and saw the show, and they loved it. Everyone loved it. They were all congratulating me. And I remember just being like, I don't deserve praise. Like I was, you know, not functioning the whole time I was trying to make this show. And so my obsession with the thesis after it was done started to shift into this obsession with sleeping because I had noticed, you know, during that week that it was a problem. You know, I had noticed that something was off. Like I kept waking up at 5 a.m. And then as soon as I started to notice it, it got worse. And I, and then I, you know, from one obsession to another, basically. And so that was when the struggle began. And that was in April. And then I graduated in May, at the end of May. That whole time, I was just really, really struggling. And so I reached out to like friends and family. I'm like, I, I'm just not sleeping. Like, has this ever oh, happened to you? It's hard to, it's hard oh, to, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're telling your story so nicely. But just for the audience, they're going to maybe wonder, like, when you said, like, I was really struggling. Was it like all nighters? Was it like really choppy sleep, just little sleep? What was it like? It was, that's a good question. It was a mix. So it started out with the waking up at 5 a.m., not being able to get back to sleep, but I was still in a functional enough state. I was just tired. And then it progressed to all nighters. Like, like the first time that happened, I was just shocked. I was like, oh, oh my God. Like I, I, don't think I slept a wink last night. And I had some nights where, yeah, it just felt like I wouldn't sleep. Like maybe I did. And then I had, my friends were really concerned and they tried to give me advice and they were like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. Like, this is really scary. And they're like, yeah, like, how do we help you? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know, you know? And so of course I turned to the internet. I turned to my family and, and they're like, you know, you should go to the doctor you should go to the doctor. Like, this is a, this is a problem. Like we see you like, you know, tripping over things. Like I just got really clumsy. I got really forgetful. <laughs> it almost felt like I had like dementia <laughs> in a way. Like I kept forgetting things constantly. Um, like a really stark example is I remember I, we had this glass this mason jar in our shower. I was also in college housing at this time. So I had roommates, you know, my age and I'm 23 now. So this started when I was 22. And I remember I dropped the glass in the shower and I got out of the shower, got dressed, left. And I forgot that I had dropped the glass in the shower. And my roommate was like, you know, Abby, you, you dropped this. And I was like, oh, like I forgot. <laughs> And, and another really big part of this that was really detrimental to my health is I also forgot about eating. Like eating went out the window. When I was so stressed with the thesis, I started skipping meals. That was sort of the precursor to the insomnia is I started skipping meals because I wasn't hungry. I'm like, I got to get this done. <laughs> I'm like, who cares if I'm, if I'm, you know, I, I don't need to eat. I need to just do this. And then after everything was done, there was like, disordered eating habits sort of continued because I just sort of, it, it affected my hunger patterns, the lack of sleep. I, I don't know. Like I, I felt like I would get hungry one minute and then it would go away. And I'm like, oh, maybe that was a fluke. And then what slowly started to happen was I was never sleepy. I was just always tired, you know? And I, I was just like, well, I don't know what my body needs. Like what's going on? Like I'm never sleepy. I'm just exhausted, you know? And then 
So when I went to eventually went to the campus doctor, I tried explaining this. And at that point, it had been going on for weeks. And I was like, almost hysterical because I was like, I can't do anything. This is so embarrassing. People are noticing it. Oh, I just want to hide. Like, this is awful. You know, I'm, I'm sort of like losing touch with reality at that point, too. I'm dissociating all the time. Just people would catch me staring and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just out of it. And so the doctor is like, well, have you tried anything to help you sleep? And I was like, well, my friend gave me melatonin one night and it worked once. And then after that, not so much. And and he was like, and I'll never forget the words the doctors say to me. I, you know, doctors make such a huge impact on their patients and they might not realize it. And so some of these words stuck with me. And I remember him saying, you know, I hate melatonin because that's something your body produces naturally. Here's some Ambien. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, that escalated quickly. But I'm like, but he's like, you need to sleep. And every doctor I've ever talked to about this has always stressed that you need to sleep. Like, this is a problem. And so I was like, yeah, you're right, I do. Like, this is really influencing my health. And everyone told me to go to the doctor. And so like, you know, I said, all right, I'll listen to you. I'll take the Ambien if it will, you know, knock me out was the whole philosophy. <laughs> Yeah, and so and so the first night I took it, it did. It gave me like six hours of sleep, which was a lot better. But it wasn't really sleep. I wouldn't call it sleep. It wasn't restorative. It was just like, you know, sedation, like knock you out. And I was like, okay, that wasn't the best, but it was better than getting maybe one or two hours, choppy, worrying, stressing about it. Like, I, and then I, I was like this. And then after two nights of that, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I was already like, no, I can't, like, I can't be on this. Like, isn't this really addictive? Like, I was looking at all the side effects. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I'm like, why would they give me something that's this addictive? And the nurse, I remember when I walked back in, she was like, when my cousin was on Ambien, he fell asleep while driving. And I remember being like, oh, my God, they're giving me this dangerous drug. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I was so scared. It made me so scared of the, the medication, even though my family was telling me to take it. My friends were telling me to take it. And I was just like, after two nights of that, I'm like, I just can't, I'm sorry. And so I tried basically everything else in the book. I mean, if I start naming off what the doctors gave me for this, like it was everything. I, I So the Ambien was first and I hated that. And then the sleep progressively started getting worse and worse. And it was just spiraling because I kept trying to control it. I was like, just trying to pull the reins. I, the tighter I pulled, the worse it got, you know? And I didn't realize what I was doing. And I thought, you know, and the doctors were like, sleep hygiene, sleep hygiene, you know? And so at the worst of it, I had perfect sleep hygiene. I just wasn't sleeping, you know? And then after finding your channel, I realized how, how detrimental that advice is and how it's still the advice that's given. <laughs> and that just boggles my mind. It blows my mind. And so for weeks, I had this very strict routine. I would take a shot, even talking about it, I'm like, oh my God, I was so regimented in my thinking of like, I have to do these steps. This will lead to sleep. This will cure me. This is what everyone's telling me to do. Even my aunt, who is, I love her to bits. She's a therapist. She was like, I was like, Alice, I'm not sleeping. I need help. And she was like, okay, here, I'm going to give you all these tips. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to you know, have my blackout curtains and the white noise, and I'm going to have a shower timed perfectly. And then if I need to take whatever sleeping pill I'm on now, <laughs> do that. You know, because after the Ambien, it was, what was it? Unisom. I tried the over-the-counters, all the over-the-counters. Melatonin, Unisom. What was the other one? NyQuil, <laughs> Benadryl. I had somebody say, knock yourself out with Benadryl. Tried that. Didn't do anything, you know? What else? Oh, then it was trazodone. Hated trazodone. But that was the one that everyone recommended. They're like, oh, you're going to love trazodone. Oh, my God. It made me so ill. So ill. Like, I could barely sleep anyways because I was so sick from this medication. Anyways, and then what else? Oh, clonopin. That one's highly addictive. They, they gave me that. They gave me that. When I went to the second do doctor, they were like, here you go. Here's trazodone and clonopin. And the instructions were very, very clear of like this regimented, like if you, you take one, if you're not asleep in an hour, you take another. If you're not asleep, you take another in an hour. So there I was timing myself. Oh, I'm not asleep in an hour. Shoot. You know, let's take the next pill.
<laughs> I was thinking way too much about it. Like my whole life, at, you know, after the thesis was over, my whole life revolved around sleep. And that was when the insomnia took on a life of its own. Because before it was for a few weeks, it was sort of a my it was like, oh, this is odd. You know, it'll get better after the stress is done. And then after that, my body was in fight or flight, you know, and, and there was a threat at night. I was always I was just alert. You know, I was wired but tired. And then after after I learned that terminology, I'm like, that's exactly how I was. You know, I was exhausted, but I was so wired that I couldn't fall asleep. And the doctors were like, really? They just didn't understand. They're like, this girl has tried like five different sleeping pills. Why hasn't why why haven't you just had one, you know, work for you? Like they were getting exasperated with me. I was getting exasperated with myself. I thought something was seriously wrong with me. I'm like, like, what's going on? You know? And it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And so that was all throughout May. I graduated somehow. I passed all my classes. I sort of flew, did the bare minimum, flew under the radar and tried not to let people know what was going on because people just don't really get it unless they've experienced it. They're just like, oh, just, just go to bed, you know, get, get some rest. Like, why are you, what, they just don't understand. You don't understand unless you've been through it really or studied it extensively. And so I'm in the midst of my struggle. I'm just so anxious, so depressed. That was also part of it, you know, the anxiety, the depression. And I've, I've been prone to depression in the past, but nothing like, like this. Like without sleep, it was a totally different level of just not being able to get through the day, not being able to function, not being able to have conversations. I'm normally a very outgoing, pretty bubbly person. And I became very withdrawn, you know, and I was just sort of hiding from my friends and everyone. It was supposed to be this very happy time. This is the end of college, right? Like a celebration, you know, of your achievements of the four years that we, you know, went through together. And I didn't feel like celebrating, you know, I was in the worst place mentally, I think that I've ever been in my life, you know, and I went through when I was still in my college house, I went through this brief period of like, you know what, I guess this is it, you know, I guess the insomnia is just gonna take me out. Like I thought my body was just gonna give out because it had been, you know, getting maybe one hour, you know, a night, maybe two, maybe even zero some nights. And that's what it felt like at least, you know. And it got to a point where I wasn't even sure when I was awake and when I was asleep. Like it was like the lines were so blurred. And I remember, I remember vividly my, my, one of my best friends, she asked me, so did you sleep? That was another question everyone always asked each night. Did you sleep? And I'd be like, well, no, I don't think so. Like, and she was like, well, you must have then if you don't know. And I'm like, it didn't feel like sleep, you know, I'm just, you know, and when I was asleep, I, I wasn't sure. You know, and I'd remember all my dreams because maybe I'd get an hour and I'd remember the dream and then it would, you know, I'd be up and stressed about it. And this went on and on and on up until graduation. And I graduated. I somehow walked across the stage. I don't know how. I was so out of it that day. So out of it. I just remember being, and my whole family was there and they were wanting me to make decisions on dinner and this and that. And I was just like, I can't do it. Like, I, I like physically can't do it. I, I don't know, even know how I'm like upright right now. Like, you know, I haven't slept in three days, like, you know, and they were just like, they were shocked. They're like, they were so taken aback by the state that I was in because they had never seen me in that state before. I'd never seen myself in that state before, you know, and I got to the point where I'd look at myself in the mirror, I'd be twitching and I wouldn't recognize myself. I'd be like, what is, who is this person? And so at that point, my family, my mom particularly, made the executive decision of like, you need to come home. Because my plan had been, I'm going to stay in my college house through the summer, work there in my college town over the summer. And then my plan was, I was going to, I had committed to the Peace Corps at that point. And I was supposed to serve two years in Kenya. So that was the plan. And I was so stressed because I'm like, oh my God, my physical health is so bad. I won't be able to serve. You know, that was my my plan after college. Like, I'm a failure. You know, I'm a total failure. You know, my body's failing me. My mind's failing me. I'm failing my future plans. Like, it was just like, 
everything just came crashing down. And then having my mom make that decision for me, basically, like you are just, it almost felt like I was unfit to make decisions for myself at that point. And that was a really, really awful feeling, just feeling like I'm this burden on my family because I can't, I'm not sleeping, so therefore I'm, you know, not a person anymore, really. I'm just, so, you know, yeah, I don't know, this thing. <laughs> and so, which is so wrong, you know, obviously, and reflecting on that, those thoughts, I'm like, that is so far from the truth. Obviously, my family was just caring for me, and they wanted me to get better, and my friends, too, with all their well-meaning advice, and the doctors, too, you know, upon reflection, all anybody wanted to do was help. They just didn't know that some of the advice that they were giving me was so harmful, you know, and it just made it worse, even though they were trying. They had every, they had the best intentions, you know, and they thought, you know, that, and the doctors thought sleep hygiene, sleep hygiene was going to help because, you know, that's what they were taught. And so I go home, I come home and I'm just in this awful space and I'm still trying all these drugs to sleep one after another. And just so confused as to why they're not working and no nothing's really working. And, you know, I'll still have nights where it feels like I get no sleep. Sometimes I feel like I get some sleep, but I'm just still not functional. Nothing's restorative about it. And the fear is still there. There's this deep fear of just the night and what's it going to hold. And it's just the sickening. It was the sickening fear, just like holding all power over me. You know, because I was just so exhausted all the time, never sleepy, you know, and so I was so felt like my and I, I said this to the doctor in my college town when I first the first time I went to a doctor for this, I was like, my mind and my body are disconnected right now. Like, I just feel like I just don't have control over anything. And they looked at me like so puzzled. Like, like they were kind of almost laughing because they were like, oh, she's just so sleep deprived. Like, she needs to just get some rest and she'll be fine. And I think, you know, anyone who's experienced insomnia can maybe relate to that feeling of just this disconnect of like, what is, what is going on? Like my body is not cooperating with what I want it to do. And that frustration, that anger, it's like the sadness, anger, like just cycling, cycling, cycling. And so I get to a certain point, this is at the end of June. So another month goes by of this very intense struggle, you know, and just anger of like, why is this still happening? Like, this is crazy, you know, like, the stress is so long gone. The only stress, and this is sort of the paradoxical part of it, the only stress I have in my life right now is not being able to sleep, you know, like, it doesn't make any sense, you know, um, I'm like, there should be a reason, there should be a reason why I'm not sleeping, I was looking for a reason, I'm like, well, there, there must be something to pinpoint it on, and I went down the internet rabbit hole, the Reddit, the this and that. I'm like, is it my thyroid? And do I have, you know, I just, I just was like, I need some blood work done. So I go in, I go in for blood work and they're just like, it's just anxiety. It's just anxiety. And the blood work comes back. It's pretty much normal, which I was shocked at because I felt so unhealthy and so just, I don't know. I was exhausted all the time. I'm like, this is not normal for a 22 year old. You know, I'm still pretty young. Um, and the blood work comes back normal, except for my um, blood sugar levels. Like they were spiked and they were almost pre-diabetic actually, because I was so stressed. My body was under so much stress, but they're like, oh, this is so reversible. You just need to start sleeping. You need to sleep is what the doctor said once again. And I'm like, you think I don't know that? <laughs> you think that's not what I'm trying to do every day? Every day I'm trying so hard. Like, I know I need to sleep, you know? Like, all I want to do is sleep. It's literally all I would think about, you know, from the beginning of the day to the end. That's And through the night, you know? And even if I managed to doze off for an hour, maybe two, may, maybe three, if I was lucky, it was still all I would think about, you know? Like, it was the only thing on my mind for months. Yeah, and something that really stuck with me is that people thought it was a, a choice. They're like, oh, you're, why? Why aren't you just sleeping? This is so silly. Like, and I just got these, like, these exasperated, like, even from the doctors, they're like, like, what? You know, they, they just didn't get it. And I, I felt so alone. I was like, nobody gets it, you know? And so, and the internet was just telling me the same things. And then I found the most harmful piece of advice besides sleep hygiene, 
sleep restriction. And so I thought I need to avoid the bed. I need to avoid the bed and I need to get up every 15 minutes if I'm not asleep. So I did it religiously. You know, I, I had a set window. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get up. No matter how exhausted I am, I'm getting up. And I was like, I had my alarm for 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, out, out, out. And I'm like, this isn't working. <laughs> After a few nights of that, I'm like, this is torturous. You know, like, why do I want to torture myself more than it already is? Like, because it's mental torture, you know, it's a more emotional torture. Anyways, so I, after a few nights of that, I'm like, who came up with this? You know, this is sadistic. <laughs> and so I'm like, there must be something else. There must be another way. And I sort of had reached the point. This was end of June, beginning of July. I'm like, I had another doctor's appointment and I told them, I'm like, I refuse to take another sleeping pill. And they respected it. I was shocked because I thought they were going to be like, no, no, you need to take this. And there was that pressure of like, you need to sleep, you need to take this, something's wrong with you. You know, why aren't you responding to these drugs? This is failed therapy, is what they called it. And, and throughout this time, I had been meeting regularly with like a talk therapist as well, because I, I was doing all the things I thought I needed to do to fix, to fix the problem, to fix myself. So I was meeting with her and she's a lovely lady. She's so wonderful, but she had no idea how to help me, zero. She had probably, I don't think she had ever seen like something as intense as what I was going through because she was just baffled and I would you know try to express what was going on she was confused you know and she was like walk me through a night like what do you do you know to prepare for bed do you listen to music do you meditate and I was like honey I've tried it all you know I have done countless meditations I'm so sick of meditating like I'm so sick I'm like it doesn't make me sleep it just makes me more anxious about not sleeping, really. And she's like, well, have you tried like a body scan where you lay there and you, you know, scan your body? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know. And I'm just more focused on every little physical sensation. Is my heart racing? Because sometimes my heart would just race when I got into bed, just race and race. And after finding your channel, I realized that it was just, it was all hyper arousal. It was all hyper arousal. And I had no idea what that even meant for a long time. I was just, you know, still baffled by how my body could do this when I'm so exhausted and still can't sleep. I get, yeah, just, and then the doctors were like, oh, this is just a symptom of anxiety. And I'm like, partially maybe, yeah. But I was just like so convinced something was wrong with me. Like the heart racing when I was in bed, the, I got really intense headaches. Like it felt like someone was taking a, a rubber band and just, squeezing my head and the chest pains. That's something that really, really affected me that I don't know if I've heard anyone speak on it on your channel about chest pain, but I got these just really, really intense chest pains, like to the point where I was like, am I having a heart attack at 22 years old? Like that's how stressed my body was, you know? And so my, my poor therapist was like, oh, I don't know how to help you. Like <laughs> she never actually said that, but you know, all I would talk about in our sessions was sleeping. That was the only thing. That's the only thing I could talk about for months, you know? It was the only thing I could articulate, you know, what was happening to me. And that was it, you know? I, I couldn't talk about anything else. It was the only thing I thought about. It was the only thing I obsessed about for months and months. And then mid-July, oh, I even subscribed to a chronic pain app because I was convinced that it had turned into chronic pain because I was in pain every day. And I'm like, oh, shoot, something's wrong with so this is, you know, it's turned chronic. So I got to subscribe to a chronic pain app. And, you know, it, it just persisted through July. Thankfully, I had stopped taking any sleeping meds at that point. I was still on an antidepressant. I still am on an antidepressant. And I th I'm still not sure how much that really contributed to my recovery in the long run. But, you know, I'm still on that one and it's been fine because the depression was a big aspect of it. Like it kind of goes hand in hand, but the sleeping was the, the biggest issue, you know? And it was all I would think about, all I would obsess about. And so after I stopped taking the sleeping pills, at least I, well, I told the doctors, I'm like, I'd rather not sleep than take another sleeping pill. That was the point that I got into. Cause I'm like, I don't wanna, they don't make me sleep anyways. And I'm just gonna have side effects from them. 
So why am I doing it? You know, why am you know? And they're like, okay, I, I respect that. And for the first time I was like, the doctor said, I respect that. And for the first time I'm like, okay, I have some autonomy here. I'm not being forced to just pump me full of drugs, you know? I was like, finally, they're listening. Like I was so shocked. I was like, oh, I thought they were gonna come at me with the, you need to take this. And so after that, the insomnia persisted, but at least I didn't have the side effects, you know, from the, the drugs. And so I was still wasn't sleeping well, and I was still very anxious and fearful at night. And then the turning point came late, Jul uh, yeah, late July, early August, when I just happened, I was going down another YouTube rabbit hole, but I happened upon your channel. Purely, pure coincidence. Like, I don't know how it popped up on my my page, but the first videos that I started watching were the success stories, the insomnia success stories. And I remember watching one, I forget the gal's name, but she struggled for 15 years. And I watched her story and she, I remember, I think she said it started in college, similar to me. And she, you know, tried all the, the, the pills, everything. And I just remember being, hearing it and I, I was just like, whoa, I latched onto it because I was like, this is someone who gets it. You know, because I was just looking for anybody who got it because everyone, nobody in my close circle, in my life, the doctors had never seen, at least in my town, had seen something this extreme. So I'm like, I must be an alien. Like, no one else in the world is like this, you know? And so when I saw that first video and I heard about her experience, I'm like, oh my God, this is me. You know, and then, I, and then eventually I listened to how she got out of it. I was like, wow, you know, wow, this is powerful. And so I just started watching all those success stories. And I'm like, oh my God, I have some hope. You know, here's somebody who's struggled for 15 years with this. And I've only, granted, I've only, I've struggled for, at that point it had been like four months, four or so, four and a half months. And I'm like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. I feel like my body's going to give out. Like, you know, and I'm like, but from that video, I'm like, okay, you know what? It is possible to recover from this. Like, I thought I was so far gone. I thought recovery, like, I didn't even consider recovering. I thought that it was, this was it, you know? And so when I saw that video, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And then I heard, I saw, started to see this pattern in all the videos, this pattern of there was this stress, there was a stressor that happened, this pretty acute stress. And then after that stress began the struggle, you know? And the fear and that and then the cycle and it continues and continues and the sleep hygiene and the, the medication and the ritualistic bedtime routines and the obsession and, and I just remember being like wow like this is this is a pattern that my brain has sort of gotten into and it's so similar to these other people who I've never met before I'm not crazy you know, I'm not crazy because I thought I was going mad. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I can't remember things. I'm irritable. I'm not myself. And and probably one of the, the worst things that went hand in hand besides the physical pain and physical symptoms I had was the apathy. I had, and this is something I've never experienced in my uh, entire life because I'm a very, you know, usually I've always been a pretty caring, empathetic person. And so the first time I felt nothing when I wasn't sleeping, it, it shocked me. It honestly, it floored me. I was like, what, how, like, I'm so far from myself right now. And I, I was alone, you know, in the struggle. I was like, and then, but then when I found the videos end of July, I'm like, whoa, I'm not alone. You know, at least there's that, you know, at least there's other people who have had this intense of a struggle, you know, and I'm like, okay, there's, there's some hope. And so at that point I was like, you know what? I have given sleep hygiene a good run and it, it's not working and I don't think it ever has and so I'm like you know what screw it I'm gonna have the worst sleep hygiene ever because the only people with good sleep hygiene are people with insomnia and I'm convinced of that to this day and so you know, I started reading in bed I started watching shows in bed I made the bed my sanctuary I started I didn't care about screens you know I was like you know what I'm gonna watch and this is where the big shift happened. I was like, you know what? When I can't sleep, I'm going to watch the trashiest television show I can find. And that that was what I did for, uh, I'm like, I'm going to try this for a week, you know, 
and just just watch it. And so I had some nights where I would sleep very little. It was kind of the same pattern. It was probably the same amount of sleep I was getting when the struggle was the most intense. But I wasn't as stressed about it because I had these trashy TV shows to watch. I was watching like Toddlers and Tiaras and Dance Moms and the Kardashians. And I made it my fun little thing, like my little secret. I'm like, if I'm going to be up all night, at least I'll be having fun. Because at that point, I had realized that the insomnia wasn't going to kill me because that was the original concern. I was like, all right, I'm done. It's I'm done. <laughs> basically. <laughs> like I thought my body was, you know, every night I'm like, OK, where, you know, is death coming? <laughs> basically, <laughs> Which is so extreme now that I think about it. But anyways, so I'm like, OK, you know, I've gotten through so many sleepless nights. It's going to be fine. Basically, at that point, I'm like, I'm just going to watch my show. And so I did, you know, sometimes I'd stay up all night watching. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'd have the whole day. And then I'm like, I'm still exhausted, but like, I'm getting through the day, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing some little things. I'm, I'm going on walks. I started to go to the gym a little bit. Even if I was, I remember one day I, I hadn't slept the night before and I still like ran on the treadmill. I was like, this is puzzling. Like I thought I needed sleep to be able to exercise, you know? And so I was just shocked. I'm like, what? what you know i still feel really tired but here i am i can get through a day on little sleep and so but then the the biggest shift came from some of your advice and it was the whole approach to wakefulness that you talk about on your channel because for the longest time i thought that i was just scared of i thought the fear was coming from a fear of not being able to sleep and that was part of it but I realized after hearing these words that you that you said on your channel, I realized it was really just more the fear of being awake in bed and being powerless to that, you know, and just that fear of like, I'm just going to be up all night, you know, and just knowing, you know, worrying about how that was going to affect me the next day and just that whole thing. And then that though that simple mindset shift from, oh, this, this, the root of this of insomnia being the fear of wakefulness, whoa my mind was was blown and so then i started to yeah befriend wakefulness i watched my trashy t tv shows you know every night for about two weeks or so and then it was like i don't know i didn't do anything i didn't do anything special and i just started sleeping <laughs> it was the most bizarre thing and then within a, a two a, a two week period, it was about two weeks when the struggle started. It was two weeks of this downhill spiral. And then it was about two weeks getting out of it too, where my body just started sleeping again. And and then it was like it was it had never happened. And I was shocked. I was like, huh? I was like, what? <laughs> I just I couldn't believe how fast my body bounced back like I was like oh I thought this was gonna take months years of because I thought I had been doing calculations in my head sleep debt oh my gosh how many hours will it take for me to get back to normal like I was doing all this math in my head just worrying myself sick basically thinking that I'd never be the same person again and then lo and behold in, in two weeks I was sleeping through the night and it was like it had never happened and then after that point was when I could begin the real reflection on it, you know, and the real like, wow, you know, you went through that. I kind of call it my whole not sleeping phase. I, I call it my purgatory because I didn't really feel fully alive and I didn't, I wasn't dead, you know, but I just, I didn't, I wasn't really living. I was this zombie, you know, and then I had to be brought back from the walking dead basically, you know, and so I call it my purgatory, but I'm like, man, I survived that, you know, like I got through that. And, you know, the thing that cured me was trashy TV, basically, what well, was also just not worrying about it. Like, I was just like, okay, after I had the realization that it wasn't going to kill me, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to watch my show and I'm going to make the night mine. Like, it's not going to rule over me. I'm going to rule over it almost. Like, I'm going to just do whatever I want. Like, and then I just started sleeping. It was so paradoxical how it happened. And I've, so I haven't, you know, struggled really i've had a couple okay since like the recovery like the two weeks where my body started like my circadian rhythm kind of came back and i wasn't just tired and wired all the time and i was actually getting sleepy at like appropriate times i still had a few nights on and off where i didn't sleep much or i felt like 
Like I would lay down, close my eyes, and it just felt like I didn't sleep the whole night. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. That, it's just a weird thing, you know? Like, and I, I've heard from other people with insomnia that sometimes it feels like you don't sleep, but you are really. Like your brain waves, if like you went to a lab and tested your brain waves, it would show that you're sleeping, but it doesn't feel like you're sleeping. So maybe I had a couple nights like that on and off, but my reaction to the sleeplessness was so different. Like, I don't know. And I would always, almost always sleep the next night and never spiraled again. Um, and I know you talk about speed bumps and I guess it was, sort of was speed bumps here and there, but since my reaction was so different and the fear was gone, the intense fear of just being up all night, the intense fear of being awake in bed and powerless and alone, since that had sort of subsided and I found peaceful sleep again, I, I knew even if I had an off night that, you know, sleep will come, like my body's fine, like it's, it's going to be okay, let me watch my show. And then that mindset shift, you know, it just, it changed everything. And like before, when I was in my intense struggle, my purgatory phase, as I call it, it was like sleep was like this resource, this scarce thing that was hard to come by. And it was like, I was, you know, rationing it. Like, how can I get enough of it? It was never enough. Say I had a night where I slept like six or seven hours, which was, whoa, like a lot for at that time. I still would wake up exhausted and I still would be like, that's not enough. It's never enough, you know? And now, like last night, I probably slept like six hours because I was up reading too late and I'm, I'm totally fine today. And it's, it's funny, I'm, you know, it's not the prescribed, you know, eight hours of sleep that you need a night, whatever. But my reaction's so different, you know? It's just so different. Every time I sleep less than eight hours, it's so different. I'm like, oh, it's fine. Like I can totally function. Like I feel like, like after going through that, that intensive a struggle, that much worry, that just like, I thought I was going to the ER in the worst of it. I'm like, I'm going to the ER. I'm going crazy, you know? Cause that, uh, there was, there was a stretch where it, I swear to God, it felt like I hadn't slept in like a week and I was getting like delusional, um, having some, a few little hallucinations and things. And anyways, so I was like, I'm going to the ER. Like, that was the most intense part. That was back in May. But anyways, so going from that to now being able to sleep peacefully, and it's been about, you know, six months since the struggle kind of subsided for me. And it's every night, just it's just the worry is gone. The, the struggle's gone. The fear's gone. And I'm just so grateful, you know? And I, I feel like, was it Alina who talked about the gifts of insomnia? I think she had a, an episode about the gifts. And I, when I first watched that, I, I almost laughed at it because I was like, the gifts? Like, what, what are you talking about? This is torture. I have never wished this upon anyone. And I still would never wish this upon anyone, you know? Um, and I still wouldn't wish it upon myself either, you know? No, you would never wish pain and, and suffering upon another human being, you know, hands down. But if I'm trying to reflect upon it and take something from it, from the experience, is that I am just so much more grateful for things in my life, like little things, like, you know, every night being grateful that I can sleep, you know, every day I wake up and I'm just like, I'm so grateful and I'm grateful for being present, you know, because that's something that the insomnia at least did for me. This goes hand in hand with the anxiety aspect of it is I was always just living in the future, worrying about the future or worrying about the past. You know, I was never like present in the moment. I was always just somewhere else, you know, either detached from my body, spacing out, not present, you know? And then after recovering, I feel like I'm a lot more present and a lot more grounded. And I guess that is a gift of insomnia is like, just after getting through that, like finding your own strength, you know? Like, I feel like last year was a year of transformation for me. Like, I met the most broken version of myself, but I also met the strongest version by far because I got through that, you know? So, yeah. So now things are going well. I'm, you know, working and I went on a trip for Christmas. I never thought I'd be able to travel again. I thought, you know, I thought I was going to, and I love to travel. I, you know, that was something I've always loved to do. And we went on a long haul flight. It was a 15 hour flight. And guess what? I slept for seven hours of it. <laughs> crazy huh like now I am a great sleeper like I also hate the whole oh you're a bad sleeper you're a good sleeper it's just sleep you know like it, it's there's no right or wrong way to sleep you know I was caught up in 
the sleep of like, I'm just a bad sleeper. Like what's wrong? You know, what's wrong with me? Something's wrong, but no, you know, like, you know, we're all, we all have the innate ability to sleep, you know, it's not, and it's effortless. That's another thing that I learned throughout your videos and over time is just like sleep hygiene is sleep effort. And the more effort you put into sleeping, the less sleep you're going to get. And just lear learning that was really, really important. And so, yeah, now it's just, I've, I haven't had a, you know, a struggle since, when was it? August of last year. So yeah, so now things are going well. That's wonderful. Amazing. And you know, every now and then this happens when somebody's just such an amazing storyteller that I, I really have no interjections. No, it, you, you told your story in such a powerful and amazing way. And oh, thank you. Already, um, anytime you already answered one question, which I always have is like, have you, has this journey, have you learned from it in a helpful way? And you said, she said that. And I, so I, I, I really have just one question for you, which yeah, is kind, yeah. of my, kind of my two final questions, which mm -hmm. is, if you could like travel back in time to when this started mm -hmm. to spiral or when you were really deep into the struggle and you could pick something to tell yourself or share with yourself, what, what would you tell yourself? Well, first I'd probably just give myself a hug <laughs> and be like, Hey, this, I know this is really, really hard. I know it feels like nobody gets it and nobody gets you. And the doctors don't get you. Your family doesn't get you. Your friends don't get you. You're all alone. But then I'd be like, there are so many people who have struggled with this and who have recovered. Like, I would just give myself that, you know, like, because I didn't think it was possible for months. I didn't think it was possible. So I would just give myself the whole, hey, I know you want to obsess about sleep. I know you want to go down the rabbit hole, go on the Internet, go on Reddit and just, you know, another huge obsession I had was going on drugs.com and looking at the medicine they would give me and like looking at all the user reviews I would do that for hours because I was so anxious about the medication as well which is probably a good sign that I shouldn't have been taking it because it was just causing me so much anxiety but um I, yeah I'd probably just give myself a big hug and say hey you know here's this channel <laughs> Honestly, if I hadn't been told about sleep hygiene, if I hadn't been told about, oh, you need to sleep, you need to, you need to take this medication, you need to do this, X, Y, Z, I think I would have recovered a lot faster because I was just trapped in this whole, this the struggle was just exacerbated by everything the doctors were telling me, everything my family was telling me. My, you know, even my family, I adore my family, you know, but, and they all, all wanted what was best for me. They just didn't understand. Yeah. And so if I could have connected myself with someone who understood earlier on in the struggle, who had told me, Hey, you're not a freak of nature. You will sleep again. And it's so possible to recover fully and to never struggle again. If I had had somebody to tell me that, like it would have been night and day, yeah. but you know, I, I went through that and I discovered it on my own, you know, with some help, with some guidance, with some few keywords and a few simple mindset shifts. And the hyper arousal was just, it's gone. It's yeah. gone, you know, because there's no threat, even though it's my amazing. body was convinced of it for yeah. a long time. Yeah. So amazing. And, you know, I was thinking as you were sharing how you found our channel kind of randomly slash yeah. the YouTube kind of algorithm probably mm -hmm. said you, 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 maybe you want to watch this and it, yeah. and it came out to, to be such a wonderful thing. And now you're here, you're a guest. And, mm -hmm. and, and this is, this is how I see us kind of really making a difference in the world. Like, you know, mm -hmm. your video will be found by somebody who really needs it and then they will share, and, and, so. and, you know, I, I think so. I think, I, I, I mean, the truth is solid. The truth is real. So somehow it will survive and, and get out there. I hope anyway, mm -hmm. but um, for now, I'll just say, this was amazing. Uh, I'm thank so you. glad we can share your story with your community. And I want to thank you so much for, for being a guest today. Of course. Thank you so much. Anytime. Be in touch. All right. Bye. Hi, it's me, Coach Daniel. And I hope you are feeling excited right now because you're so close to the finish line of insomnia. And if you found that aha moment you've been looking for in this video, please share it with the world. Because, you know, insomnia can be such a lonely and isolating place before you find our community. Speaking of which, if you would like some more personalized support on your journey, then head over to thesleepcoachschool.com. We have free and paid courses available with certified sleep coaches who have seen the worst of insomnia, 
left the struggle and now are ready to help you. If you decide to join, we look forward to seeing you on the other side.